In section, section 3.6, he talk about the addition theorem for spherical harmonics. So the proof uh, is a little bit uh, difficult to understand, so I'll, I'll try to explain in here. So to understand that, we actually need to go back uh, a little bit in the end of the section 3.5. So he talk about an expansion in spherical harmonics or a function, if you have a function g that depends on spherical angle fate and then a simple angle phi, that uh, you can explain that in spherical harmonics with L from zero to infinity and M from minus L to L and some coefficient A, L, M, and y, l, m, theta, and phi. So that's just the usual uh, expansion by spherical harmonics. And the coefficient then can be calculated by the, the usual formula, just integrating over a solid angle and multiply the, the function g with the complex conjugate of YLM by this G function. Okay, so that's just, uh, this is due to the fact that uh, YLM uh, defined as uh, of, of a normal set. Okay, so, um, so all these are just general, but then uh, we take a uh, look at a particular relation. So for the M component AL0, that will only pick up the YL0, M equals zero term, theta phi, G theta phi. Okay, and when you set M equals zero, you actually just pick up the one term and that this basically is a legendary polynomial with just uh, some uh, normalization constant. So this is uh, by equation 3.53, you have uh, this YLM definition where M equals zero, you just pick up a normalization constant 2L plus one over four pi, and integrate over the omega, and just PL cosine theta multiplied by G theta phi. Okay, so that is uh, just the L, L micro zero component. All right, <clears throat> so this is uh, equation 3.60. So uh, this is still fine, and uh, but this the same AL zero uh, coefficient also show up in another situation. Okay, so, so this is coming from here. Okay, but if you for, come going back to the form, the original uh, expansion, if you set theta equals zero, so theta equals zero and phi, so that would get you um, sum of L from zero to infinity, M from negative L to L, A, L, M, and then Y, L, M, when theta is zero, and phi. And when you evaluate Y, L, M at theta equals zero, actually only pick up M equals zero for all the M equals not equals zero term, when you evaluate theta, theta is zero, they are all zero. So you pick up just one term, okay? And uh, so that one, and that one term, what is that uh, can be uh, obtained by uh, equation 3.57, basically defined by the uh, same 
uh, actually not that equation. So, so I think Jackson has something here somewhere. Maybe, maybe he didn't talk about that. But you can look at, look back at uh, at uh, equation three point fifty three when you set uh, theta is zero. Okay, so it's all the P L M non zero M would be zero. Only the zero term is non zero, but for, but for theta is zero, cosine theta is one, P L is one is one. Okay, and so only that term survive and the constant in front is the square root of two L plus one over four pi. Okay, so so one only one thing survive, one term survive is a so sum of L from zero to infinity and the square root of two L plus one over four pi. And then uh, times this A L M, but then M only one term survives, so A, A L zero. Okay. So that would be the uh, equation 3.59. Okay, so you have a AL zero here and AL zero here. All right, so so it means that if you have AL zero, that can be written in this form. So a, fu a certain function multiplied by an agenda polynomial of cosine theta and integrating and with this normalization constant, then at this function, when you evaluate at theta equals zero, we give you a sum of all this AL, AL zero with this uh, coefficient in front. Okay, so that there's uh, a two relations that related to AL, AL zero to this function G. Okay, and then we'll uh, use that to uh, find out uh, how you explain the a, a gender polynomial and get the Speaker harmonics. Basically, what, what we want to explain is this PL cosine gamma. Instead of cosine theta, we have cosine gamma. And what is that? So we want to we want to get this uh, to explain in the basically uh, spherical harmonics of theta and phi and theta pi and phi pi. So we want to find out what is this. And remember cosine gamma is uh, cosine theta, cosine theta pi plus sine theta sine theta pi cosine phi minus phi pi. Okay. So, um, so we want to do that. So basically if you have x and x pi, x pi, so fade gamma of angle is between the two. Okay, and to do that, uh, the first argument is that uh, we know that uh, the by the uh, by, def by definition of the when we do the separable solution for the Laplace equation, we already show that uh, Laplace and PL cosine theta plus L times L plus one divided by L square PL cosine theta is zero. But we know that, so because this is uh, what we construct this uh, Legenda equation. Okay, and now uh, this PL cosine gamma is, would actually satisfy the same differential equation, same this equation, because uh, cosine gamma involving this factor basically is the angle between x and x pi. Okay, so we, if we choose, uh, depends on what you look, how you look at it, we choose either x pi as a c coordinate or x as a c coordinate, then the gamma actually becomes the the spherical angle theta. So, and at that coordinate system, of course, uh, your subsequent theta to gamma is still satisfied this relation 
So this means that uh, PL cosine gamma cosine gamma plus L L plus one L squared PL cosine gamma. Also satisfy the same equation. And likewise, either Laplace and Pine will also satisfy this relationship because um, they're basically, uh, you just uh, just interchange theta and theta Pine, phi and phi one. They are symmetric in defining the gamma angle. So, so either way you look at it, they are basically satisfying the same equation and one more thing is that uh, this relation also satisfied by all the YLM. So remember Laplace and YLM. 